Good morning. Happy New Year. What a great, great time to begin a church service is right here on the first day of a brand new year. We're excited about today's service, very special communion commitment service. And uh, we're, we're, we're glad that the Lord's here and we're going to have a great time together today. Why don't we begin right now? Let's just begin by lifting up our hearts, lifting up our hands, inviting the Lord into this place. Let's worship him together with the worship team.
God, just lift your hands right now to the King. Just worship Him. Hallelujah, Lord. You are great and greatly to be praised. Lord, we bless you. We honor you, God. Lord, we give you all glory. We give you all praise today. Come on, can we just take a moment and praise Him? Without the lyrics, without anything else, can we just worship the King of Kings? Lord, you are great. You are mighty. You are holy, God. There is nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. One more time, can we just clap our hands and make a joyful noise? Hallelujah. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's good to be in church today. Good to see everyone. You may be seated. Seems like it's been forever since we've been here. Hope everyone had a great Christmas and we're uh, praying and believing for a wonderful new year, a time of adventure, a time of excitement, a time where we're going to grow and, and uh, we trust that we're all going to achieve what God has purposed for our lives in 2023. I have some things I want you to take with you today. Our goal uh, this year is to help you accomplish uh, all of the things that are needed in your life and we're going to give you the tools to help you do that we have uh, every year for a number of years now um, offered opportunities for you to read the Bible through and this is a great reading program if you've never read the Bible through I would challenge you to make the commitment today let that be something that you incorporate in your daily devotions let it be a part of the disciplines as, as followers of Christ, we have to have disciplines in our lives, and we'll never know God if we don't know his word. And so it's important to get that into us. We have adult reading schedules as well as um, some modified reading schedules for children, and I would recommend, recommend these for kids that are 12 and younger. And so uh, I'm going to invite, uh, if I can get about three ushers to come up here real quickly and give me a hand, we want to... Uh, get these out to you today these are the children's if uh, someone wants to intentionally give those out to the kids and the rest of these we want to distribute to all of the adults and um, then when you're finished come back up here because I've got some more stuff well it's a new year and uh, with that we have a lot of new things that we're going to be introducing to the church in 2023 I think you're going to really enjoy and and appreciate um, in uh, in in your life and in the life of your families we're going to be talking more about some of these things in the um, weeks to come however one of the things I'd like to uh, bring your attention to is that we are going to be re-implementing our life groups January the 22nd that's all right. Go ahead and clap your hands. It's, a, it's been a two-year period where we suspended our life groups. Uh, COVID hit, and it just wasn't a good idea for us to have uh, such close proximity with one another. And, and it's been a while now, and we feel very comfortable in reintroducing this wonderful ministry. It helps us to get connected. Uh, what I like about life groups is this. Uh, we care for one another. We offer our support for one another. It's not just uh, a few people gathering together in a home, but you become part of one another's lives. And um, it, it's good for us because sometimes, even in a church our size, it's easy for people to fall between the cracks. It's easy for someone to be experiencing a hardship and we not know about it, or someone have a death in their family and we not know about it, or someone is struggling and we not know about that. And so the life groups offers some safety. It gives us the opportunity to, to stay more aware of what's taking place. Plus, it just connects us in a way that is more apostolic than anything else that we do. In Acts chapter 2, you'll read where they went from house to house. They broke bread, had fellowship and prayer. And so that's what we're doing in our life groups. And we need to do some restructuring. We, we've got a lot of new folks that have come into the church over the last um, two years. And so we're going to be making some modifications. So next Sunday, this is really important. If you were a facilitator when we uh, stopped meeting a couple of years ago, uh, we're going to ask you to come to this meeting next Sunday. 
if you would like to be a facilitator, we're going to invite you to come as well. It's going to be next Sunday at 945. Where we're in the fellowship hall. We need to discuss some of the nuts and bolts of, of making this happen and reintroducing this program. And then our first meeting is going to take place on January the 22nd. We'll be meeting each month thereafter. And so uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, I think it's going to be something that uh, everyone is going to really appreciate. We'll talk more about it. You know, some people stress out. They get all panicky when they think about someone coming to their home. Look, the purpose of meeting in one another's homes is not to do a white glove test, ladies, all right? No one's coming to inspect your home. No one's coming to see how you live. Nobody's going through your medicine cabinet. The goal here is to create some closeness and some connections. When we're at church, most of the conversations that we have here are brief, guarded, and very casual. When we're in a life group, we really get to know each other in a greater way. And so if you look back on the behavior of the early church, it was customary back in Jesus' day that when you invited someone into your home, you were inviting them into your life. That's why when Jesus said to Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house, everyone's jaw dropped because that was so significant. Jesus was saying that I'm going to invite this sinner. I'm going to go to his house. I'm going to become part of his life. He's going to become part of my life. It wasn't just a location or, or a place that Jesus was going to go. This was a statement. This was a declaration. I'm bringing Zacchaeus into my life. I'm going to be part of his life. And so uh, that's what life groups uh, accomplish. So we're going to be talking more about that here uh, in the next few weeks, some do's and don'ts and some things that maybe you need to uh, uh, prepare for, nothing major, but just some stuff that will help you to understand a little bit better what you can expect from our life groups. Now, our ushers, you all didn't follow my instructions. But come on back up here if you would, please. I've got some calendars I want to give out. This is for the first six weeks of the new year, if each of you could... Uh, take one of these home with you today, put it on the refrigerator or do something with it that uh, will help you to have good access. No paper airplanes, please. Don't leave them in your seat when you leave today. One thing that you will notice that we have coming up also is in uh, the month of January, we're going to have a 21-day period where we're going to reconsecrate our lives to the Lord through prayer and fasting. We're doing the Daniel's Fast, which is a fast that accommodates pretty close um, to what most people can can uh, incorporate into their diet whether you have a, an illness such as uh, diabetes or something this this is still something that you can do we're not going to be legalistic about it we're not going to we're not going to take it to an extreme we're just going to follow what Daniel did he, he refrained from meats he, he avoided uh, delicacies such as desserts and that sort of thing and he didn't drink the king's wine so essentially we're not eating meat and we're not going to be eating desserts and we're not going to be drinking stuff other than than water for a 21 day period now there are some tremendous health benefits to such a a, a diet it's not necessarily something we uh, should aspire to live on but it's something that allows us to show our sincerity and our commitment uh, to drawing closer to the Lord. Daniel did this. You'll find a number of different fasts throughout the Bible. This is one that just about anyone could do. If you can't do it, then we're going to ask you to consider some other ways of fasting, just as David fasted his music because he was very, very passionate about his music. Maybe you do an immediate fast or some other type of fast that, that uh, would work for you. Remember, it's not a fast unless it's denying yourself something that you really want to do but you're saying I'm not doing this now our Catholic brothers and sisters they give up things for Lent and they're very sacrificial about that so I think it's really important for us as followers of Christ to be willing to say I'm going to make some some commitments this year and I'm going to start off the brand new year by by purging myself or cleansing myself of all the stuff that doesn't belong you know, in the Bible, we read of how they purified gold. It was put to the fire, and all the impurities that were there was, was, would rise to the surface, and they would skim that off so that the most pure form of gold could be achieved. 
And that's sometimes what we need to do in our spirit. We need, to, we need to go to the fire and allow all the impurities and all this stuff. It's really quite remarkable the number of things that get into our spirit that we're not even aware of. You see, we live in a world that's full of anti-Christ rhetoric. And, and the music, the entertainment industry, the social media, all the stuff that's out there sometimes, there's nothing that, that reflects Christ in those things. And sometimes we allow the mentality of the world to get into our hearts, and then it puts distance between us and God. So we're going to just cleanse ourselves during this 21-day period, and we're going to reconsecrate ourselves to the Lord. I think it's going to be something that everyone can enjoy, and we look forward to doing it together as an entire family church family now there are a couple events if you're having a birthday or there's some type of an event that's planned I know we have a, a um, meeting with all of our team leaders uh, coming up the I think it's the 21st uh, and we're going to be eating together so we're not being legalistic about this all right so if you need to suspend it for a day that's understandable if you have to suspend it for for 13 or 14 days then that's a different situation but we want to make sure that we are committing ourselves to the Lord and we want to there's something really uh, to be said about the unification of the body of Christ where we are unified where there's where we're all together as one remember on the day of Pentecost they were in one mind and in one accord and so we want to be unified this is going to help us personally it's going to help us collectively as a body of Christ so we're really looking forward to that amen now there are some other things that are taking place uh, through the course of the year, we're going to be talking more about that here, as I said, in, in the next few weeks. Um, but there are some people uh, that have had some birthdays uh, in the last few days. I, I, I've uh, tried to catch up with everyone that I know on Facebook that's had birthdays. But uh, one birthday in particular that I have uh, great interest in, and that's my wife. Today is her birthday. So happy birthday, Wendy, first lady of our church. And uh, there's going to be cake for everyone. Well, probably not. So having birthdays, a, a great milestone. And uh, we, we all want them. They say the people that have the most birthdays live the longest. How many has had a birthday this past year? Every, some of you didn't have a birthday this past year? Well, happy birthday to everybody. Today we're going to receive communion, and uh, we're going to do this, and then uh, we're going to talk here in a little bit about uh, committing and recommitting ourselves to the Lord. But right now I'd like for us to kind of shift gears a little bit because this is a very important thing that we are to do. Jesus said, as it's inscribed on this communion table, that as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. There's no better thing to do at the beginning of a brand new year than to remember what the Lord has done for us. Not only what he did for us so that we could be saved, he took our place at Calvary. He became the sacrificial lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. But what he does for us continually in our lives. The psalmist said he loads me daily with benefits. And sometimes it's good just to throw it into neutral and say, today I'm going to reflect upon what the Lord has already done for me. And as we receive communion, we do so with sincerity. It's, it's not something that we casually do. This isn't a portion of the service where we're having this party-like mentality. This is a time where we're very solemn as we come before his presence and we say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you have done for me. Thank you for what you continually do for me. The blood of Jesus is represented um, in the wine. The body of Christ is represented in the unleavened bread. And what we do, we do because of what he did for us. The Last Supper, the wine, the bread, he said, this is my blood, this is my body. And it's very representative of that today, 2,000 years later. And so we pause today to receive communion. We're going to invite you to stand right now, and we're going to split the church in half right here, right down the middle. Everyone can divide up and form a couple of lines. When you come up, listen very carefully. You can take your 
communion cup. Now, there, there's a very thin, and it's a little difficult to get off, uh, but there's a very thin layer of plastic that you have to peel back to get to the wafer, and it's separate from the, the plastic cover uh, over uh, the juice. And so you want to peel that back very carefully, and, and that way you don't destroy the wafer. And then you want to have a good firm hold on the, on the cup as you pull it back so that you're not to squeeze it or to spill it, all right? And when you've received your communion cups, then we're all going to uh, partake of communion together. So you can come, receive it, go back to your seats. When we're finished, uh, we're going to ask the ushers. We have some uh, uh, trash cans on each side of the church and I think there's one there Jackson right there to your right and we're gonna pass those around and allow you to put the cups uh, in directly into the trash okay why don't you come now Thank you, Jesus. children and their children and their children in his favor your upon you in a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children in his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you Within you, he is with you, he is with you in the morning, in the evening, and you're coming, and you're going, and you're weeping, and rejoicing, he is for you, he is for you. Ask uh, the musicians if they would want to come as well. If you'd like to try to peel back this very thin layer on top, remove the wafer. God's goodness is simply overwhelming. The Bible says it's the goodness of the Lord that causes men to repent. The psalmist said, his goodness and his mercy follows me all the days of my life. Man, God has been good to us. And so today it's with a heart of thanksgiving that we take this time and we honor him and we express our gratitude.
for what he has done for us through the death, burial, and resurrection for his blood and for his body. We receive this in Jesus' name. Let's all partake together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, we appreciate you. Can we just take a moment, lift our hands, lift our hearts to the Lord together. Let's tell him how much we love him. Can you do that? Father, you are so good to us continually, Lord. You are there in the time that we need you. You're there always with us by our side. God, we're thankful for all the wonderful experiences that we've shared and even for the hard times that we've encountered because it let us know that we're not able to make it on our own, but our dependence is upon you. God, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We worship you. You are wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, our Lord, our God, our savior, our redeemer. We bless your name. We bless your holy name and we give you all the praise, Lord. You are worthy. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. If the ushers could help us out real quickly and, and uh, pass around the containers so that you can safely get rid of these. Amen. Let's sing together for just a moment. Can we do that? Let's just take a little bit of time here and ex express our thankfulness to him. your hands and sing. lift our hands and tell the Lord he's worthy. Come on. We love you, Jesus. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. We want to invite the ushers if they would come. We're going to receive this morning's tithing and offering. We do have some announcements we're going to run for you on the overhead uh, while you give and the band's going to play. Let's be mindful of, uh, of, the, uh, of the announcements.
All right, all the kids ages 2 through 11 are going out these doors over here into the West Wing with Daniel Bailey and team. Let's give them a big hand as they go. How many believed a year ago that you would be here? Sometimes a year can modify everything in our life. One phone call can change our entire world. Every day is a gift from God. Every day when we wake up and our feet hit the floor, we can say, thank you, Lord, because of his goodness and his mercy and his love for us. I'm not going to take a lot of time here today, but I do want to talk to you about some things that I think will help set the stage for growth in your life and for you achieving what God would want to do in you and through you in 2023. And it's important that each of us position ourselves. If we're, if we're not putting ourselves in that place, you see, the, the Lord doesn't impose himself. He doesn't force himself into our lives. But if we position ourselves and we take the posture, Lord, I'm open and receptive. I want you to do something in me. He will. He will. The scripture says if we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. And so that's our goal in 2023. When we, we want to draw closer to God. We want to know him in a greater way. We want to walk in a dimension of faith that maybe we've never walked in before. We want to achieve things that maybe we've only dreamed about in the past. And God is no respecter of persons. What he's ever done for anyone, he can do for you. And if he's ever done it before, he can do it again. He's amazing. Let's put our hands together and give him praise one more time. God is so good. He is so good. If you could put my scripture text up for me, Jackson, I would appreciate that. Reading from the book of Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 12, it says, Not that I have already attained, or am already perfected, but I press on. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. I love the, I love the, the wording here that the Apostle Paul chose. He said, I press on. I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, here's that word, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Everyone say press on. We got to do that. We've got to press on. My message today is simply this. Janus and Jesus. Janus and Jesus. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Help us to have that open heart and open mind and allow you, God, to do what you desire to do in each and every one of us today, Lord. Help me to be receptive. Help me, Lord, to put myself in that place where you can speak into my life and you can make the difference that is needed. God, we thank you for what you're doing right at this moment and what you're going to do, and we'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, Janus is really uh, an interesting thing here because it was the Roman uh, mythical god for which the name of our calendar, the first month of our calendar, uh, gets its name, January. It's based on the Roman uh, god Janus. Now, Janus was known for having two faces, one that looked forward and one that looked backward. Oftentimes, uh, the Romans would place the symbol of Janus above their gates and above their doorways because people were both coming and going. And it's important for us today to consider this. 
We have to look back. We need to look back. It's a healthy thing to look back. Throughout the scripture, you'll find many occasions where the Lord instructed the children of Israel to remember. He said, look back, remember this. When they crossed the Jordan River, he instructed men to take rocks out of the river and they uh, placed them there as a memorial so that the generations that would come when they saw those rocks would inquire what do these rocks mean and they would be reminded as they reflected back the miraculous hand of God allowed them to walk across on dry ground. They passed through the Jordan River on dry ground. And what God has ever done before, he can do again. And it's a remembrance. It's a memorial. It's a reflection. It's looking back that helps us to appreciate what God has done. Many times you'll, you'll look through your concordances and you'll find the word remember, 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 because the Lord does want us to never forget what he has done. Because it's, a, it's, a, it, it's an inspirational point for what he's about to do. Because if he's done it before, he can do it again. So looking back over 2022, it's, it's not a bad thing to do that. Matter of fact, I would encourage you to do that. And there are some wonderful things that maybe happened for you in 2022, some things that, that you will never forget about, some wonderful positive experiences that you've shared with other people. And that's the key. It's not about just something that we obtain or something that we've achieved, but it's sharing our lives with other people that brings fulfillment and happiness into our lives. It's a very lonely life out there on our own. God never intended for us to live in isolation. He intended us to have a community, and that's what the church is, is so uh, great because of that. We are a community of believers. We are a faith-based community. We, we share our lives together. We do life together, and that's a, that's a really good thing because the Bible tells us when one of us hurt, we can all hurt. And we're there to comfort and strengthen and encourage one another. Paul used the word edification, and that word means to build up, encourage, and support. And that's what we do for one another. We bear one another's burdens. And it's good to do that. If you're out there on your own, you're struggling on your own. But when other people, if one can put 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight, there's power in a, in a body of believers that come together in faith. And great things can happen because of that. We need one another. No man is an island. None of us were intended. The Bible says no man lives to himself and no man dies to himself. But we are to do life together. We need one another. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I need you. You need me. We need one another. So we need to look back. And, and some of you, I know, have had some struggles some of you have gone through some difficult times over the past year, and I know that many of you have um, experienced uh, health issues and some financial struggles. I, I get that. I know that's part of life. We don't want to make things bigger than it is. There are just some things that happen as a result of life. Who sinned? That's what the uh, Pharisees ask, and that's what so even the disciples questioned, who sinned? Was it his parents that did this? And Jesus said, no, but that the glory of God could be made manifest. Sometimes it's just part of life. It's not that someone has done something and they're being punished for that, and that's why they're dealing with sin or dealing with sickness, and it's not always the case. But we have to understand that life brings to us some curveballs, throws at us some things that maybe we're not expecting. That's just part of life. That's part of life. I had a kidney stone back in October that, that uh, if you've ever experienced a kidney stone, I kind of think that may be what everyone's going to have in hell. <laughs> it's the most excruciating pain I've ever had in my life. And I've, I've had some painful things happen, but man, that was the worst. And what made it uh, even greater was the fact that there was a period of time from when I had the onset until they were able to get me to surgery and get me some relief and, and, and get the stone out of me. It's terrible, terrible. I wouldn't want anyone to go through that. It, it is just absolutely terrible. But I'm not going to carry the kidney stone with me into 2023. It's history. Looking back, it's history. It's over. 
Losing loved ones is part of life. At some point in time, you're going to say goodbye to your parents, to your grandparents. It's going to happen. That's part of life. Grieving is a very healthy process of the healing that needs to take place when we lose someone. We need to grieve. If we don't grieve, we don't heal. In the Old Testament, Moses gave a period of time for people to grieve. They were given a number of days because that was healthy. They needed that. And then beyond that, they had to start moving forward. It's healthy to grieve, but after a period of time, we have to move forward. If we don't move forward, then it becomes unhealthy. And that's not good. Grieve, that is good. But remaining in that for an extended period of time, that's not good. It doesn't disgrace the memory of the one that we, that we lost. That's, that's always going to remain with us. Uh, death always leaves a mark, a scar that's there forever. It's always going to be there. The people that you lost in your life, I can't imagine, I can't even bring myself to comprehend what it would be like to lose a child. It's got to be one of the worst things that a person could ever encounter. We have some tremendous losses. We all are going to have loss. That's part of life. That's God's design. Even losing a pet sometimes can pull at our heart because they become part of our family. I get that. Part of life is dealing with losses. I have a friend that I follow on Facebook. I was a good friend with her husband. I knew him for probably the biggest part of my life. He passed away in 2015, and to this day, not a week goes by that she's not posting something about the loss of her husband, and that was in 2015. And really, it's beneficial, it's healthy for us to move forward. You're still going to have the memories. You're still going to respect and honor the life of the person that you lost, but you have to to move forward. Some of the times what happens in our losses or our hurts or the pains that we experience in life, those things can just be overwhelming. They can be so big that those are the things that we focus on. And what happens is this, we focus so much on the loss that we don't appreciate the present and it will actually hinder our future. And so the loss Though it may be big, we have to be able to move forward. That's God's design. That's what God intended to be. He is our father. He is our mother. He is our sister. He is our brother. He's everything to us. And he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never put more upon you than what you're able to bear. God's going to be with us through the healing process, through the process of grief. God's going to be with us. He's going to help us. But we have to look back, and it's good to remember the holidays sometimes are wonderful, wonderful occasions, but sometimes they can can really be a time where it brings us down a little bit because it's not what it used to be. One of the things that I've discovered as I age is this. You have to be adaptable. You have to be flexible enough to adjust to change in your life. We're always in change. We're constantly in change. That newborn baby that was born today is changing almost minute by minute. And all of us are changing. Our bodies are changing. The way we perceive things oftentimes changes with age because our needs change. Our situation changes. The family of four is now back down to the original two, and sometimes it's a household of one. And what we have to understand is we need to adjust. We have to make the modifications in our life to adjust in a healthy way. 
Reflecting back is always good for us to do. Remembering is a good thing. It's a good thing. So just as the two faces of Janus, one looking forward and one looking backward, it's okay for you to look backward. Please look back. Don't forget the benefits, the rewards, the wonderful things that God has done for you in times past because that's important in building your faith for the future. You need to look back. But the second face of Janus is one that is looking forward. That face is looking forward. And we have to look forward with a vision of what the Lord is going to do for us in our future. In January and in February and throughout 2023, what God wants to do in our lives, we have, to, we have to turn toward that direction that God would have us to take. We need this because without a vision, the people perish. You've got to be able to look forward. You've got to expect, and it's that expectation that prepares our hearts to receive or to allow God to do what is needed in our lives to help us accomplish what he wants to do in our lives. Do you get that? Are you with me today? We have to look back, but we also have to look forward. We need to look to the future. And we have to understand that God is that, that was with us in the past is with us now, and he's going to be with us in the future. So we have to look forward. It's with, it's with this sense of expectancy, this anticipation. I'm thinking about the commercial when I was a kid, the ketchup commercial, anticipation. Remember the commercial, the ketchup just ran so slow out of the bottle. Anticipation, it's making me wait. But waiting on God sometimes can be frustrating because we want everything and we want it right now. We don't want to wait around. In this push-button microwave culture that we live in where everything is at our fingertips, we want God to do the same thing in our lives. But sometimes God wants us to tap the brakes a little bit so that he can help prepare our hearts for what he's going to do for us in the future. That next chapter in our life, what he wants to do for us, sometimes requires some preparation. And we have to allow God to do that in our hearts. Why I love communion and why I love the fact that we're here on the first day of a brand new year is to make a commitment to the Lord. Whatever you want to bring into my life in 2023, I want to make sure that I am preparing my heart to receive it. I want to position myself. I want to, I want to ready my heart and my spirit and put myself in a place where you can do what you want to do in me. Amen. Amen. So we look forward, you know, whether it's a vacation, whether it's a, a promotion on the job, whether it's, it's, it's some other um, aspect of your life that you're, you're looking forward to, what, what we can uh, fall into, and this is a dangerous thing for us to do, and that is to uh, always be in such an anxious place for things to happen that we miss what God is doing at the very moment. We're constantly waiting. It's like when you're a kid, can't wait till I'm 16, get to drive. Can't wait, can't wait, you know. Man, and, and life goes by so quickly. You know, your kids, there's just a small window in your life for you to raise your kids and to help influence their lives and prepare them to become adults. Just a very, very small window. Time goes by just like that. You know, one week they're crawling around on the floor. Next week they're driving the car. And, and, and before you know it, they're up and out of the house and they have a family of their own. Life is but a vapor. James said it appears for a season and then it vanishes away. That's how quickly. He, our lives go by so very, very quickly. That's why it's important for us to say, Lord, I'm prepared to go where you lead me. I'm prepared for you to do what needs to be done in my life. I'm giving myself to you. Every, every fiber of my being, every molecule of my structure, everything I am, I commit to you. What the enemy likes to do, and that is the negative things that happen in our life can be so huge that they hang like a cloud over us. You know, we don't always remember the compliments. We don't always remember the, 
the nice things that people have done for us. We don't always remember the, the wonderful positive experiences, but those negative things, those harsh words, those hurts, those disappointments, man, they really are huge in our lives. And they can be so big that they divide us from our friends and from our loved ones. They separate us from what God really intended for our life. We, we all are going to have disappointments. We're all going to have things that happen in our lives that hurt. That's part of life. But we want to make sure that we're not just looking one direction. We've got to turn and look a new direction. The forward face means that I'm accepting what challenges are before me. What new things God wants to introduce into my life. I am preparing my heart. I want my relationships to be greater. I want my, I want my walk with God to be greater. In 2023, we're going to be doing some things, and especially in the first 90 days of this new year, we're going to help you accomplish your goals. I put it on Facebook yesterday. That it was in the newspaper, the Lockhorns. Anyone ever see their cartoons? I love the Lockhorns. Loretta is holding up a list of Leroy's New Year's resolutions from the previous year. And she said, I, I kept these from last year because you can use them now. The implication is he never accomplished his New Year's resolutions. And what we want for you is not necessarily to make a resolution, but we want you to accomplish the goals that God has purposed for your life and the things that you need to achieve in your life, whether it's losing weight or getting in shape. And, and getting in shape, you can be a, a thin, healthy-looking person and not be in good shape. So we want you to, as, as Paul wrote, to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We want to help you to accomplish that. We want to help you if you want to lose weight, if you want to get in shape, if you want to become healthier, if you want to get rid of the clutter in your life, if you want to help become more organized. Uh, we, want to, we want to help you achieve that. If uh, you want to draw closer to the Lord, if you want to develop a, a consistent discipline in your life of reading God's word and praying and you want your relationship with the Lord to be enhanced we want to help you accomplish that we want to help you accomplish your goals if it's it's having healthier relationships and be that in your marriage or in your family or in your uh, work relationships or even your relationships within the body of Christ we want to help you achieve that so we're going to put some things in your hand we're going to give you good teaching and instruction that will help you but we're also going to give you some things that you can take home and that you can make application of because part of the future is preparing ourselves to go in that direction we're not we're not camping out here we're not staying here this brand new day is a launching point for a brand new year and we're moving forward now one thing i'd like to point out is paul said this one thing i do he didn't say Okay, there's two things I do here. One, I forget the past. And two, I look into the future. He didn't say that. He said, this one thing I do, I forget the past and I look forward. He did that as one action. It wasn't two separate things. Forgetting the past and moving forward was one thing. And that's what I want to emphasize right now. The one thing that you need to do today is forget the past we don't forget what God has done, but we forget the past. All the negativity of 2022 is in the past. And we're looking forward and we're expecting great things for the future because God is going to lead us and guide us into 2023. It's one intentional action. It's one deliberate action. It's one thing, both forgetting and moving forward. And we have to do it with a, with a force. The Bible says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Nothing just happens accidentally. You just don't wake up one day and you're healthy. You just don't wake up one day and you have wealth. You don't just wake up one day and all your relationships are really healthy. Your marriage is strong. It has to be deliberate. It has to be something that you prepare for and you intend to do. You have to do it. You have to press. You have to press. You have to press. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, but you press. Sometimes it's not the right timing, and you just don't feel like you're in the mood to do it, but you press. A few weeks ago, when I uh, had my bout with uh, 
my health. I uh, learned from blood work that uh, my, uh, my condition was such of a, uh, uh, the doctor described it as pre-diabetic. I know diabetes, and some of you deal with that, and I understand it, it complicates everything. As a matter of fact, it, it makes you more prone to other things, um, things that can really compromise your health in a great way. Most, most of the diabetes that we deal with in our, in our society today is a type 2 diabetes, which is caused by diet and, and lifestyle. And if we can modify our diet and our lifestyle, oftentimes the type 2 diabetes can go away. Not always, but many, many times it can. And so we have to press when we don't feel like it to do what needs to be done. If being healthy, if being fit was, was easy, everybody would do it. But it requires a press. You have to make the effort. And so since that day, I made up my mind, I'm not going to let that happen. And so I'm going to drastically modify my life. And my wife can testify of this. There's not a day that I haven't done something to help since that time back in in late October, since that time, there's not a day goes by that I'm not doing something to get myself in better shape. I'm walking. I'm, I'm, if, it's, if it's raining or snowing or when it was, what was it, 20 below zero, I'm on my treadmill. But if it's nice out, yesterday was a great day, walked the neighborhood, made laps around the neighborhood. I'm out moving. You can't lay on the couch with a bag of Cheetos and say, I'm going to be healthy in 2023. No, that's not going to happen. You, you can't eat a box of Krispy Kremes and chase it down with a Starbucks 500 calorie coffee and say, I'm going to get in shape. Those coffees are like hot milkshakes. You, you can't drink Starbucks every day and get in shape. I'm sorry. It's just, it's going to take its toll. All of the stuff, what we do now, what we're doing right now, we're going to pay for later. And so you have to press, and we want to we want to challenge you, we want to motivate you, and we're going to do it in love. We're going to do everything that we possibly can to help you accomplish your goals. But it's going to require you making the effort. If you want to have a better prayer life, you have to press on. You have to roll out and do it when you're not in the mood, when you don't feel like it, when you're tired, when you you, you feel a little sick. You press on. You press on. When it's 20 below and the, the snow and the wind is blowing and, and, and you don't feel like doing anything, you do it anyway. You press on. Come on, you have to have some discipline in your life if you want to accomplish what God wants to do in your life. So I'm going to ask you today, our commitment is not just our commitment to the Lord in which that's huge. We need to do that. But our commitment also has to be to ourselves. I'm going to, I, I respect myself enough and I honor what God has given to me, that being life, enough that I am going to do my part to press on. Always pressing on. I love, I love the words that Paul used here. I press toward the mark. I press on. That says this is not easy, but I'm doing it anyway. God's got great things in store for you. There's some wonderful things that are going to happen in this upcoming year, some positive things. Say, so, well, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't matter how it looks. God can do what no man can do. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. God can do it. And he can do it through you. Let's all clap our hands to him right now. He can do it through you. Why don't you stand with me, please? January. It's kind of interesting. I think it was in the 1700s that our calendar was changed, and January became the first month of the new year. And um, it's interesting because uh, January sometimes can make the, the feel of January sometimes can make us feel a little melancholy, possibly, or a little down. You know, it's gray outside. There's not really, in January, good 
amount of sunshine. Typically, it's, it's cloudy and rainy and snowy and cold, and that's what happens, and that affects our, our outlook on things sometimes. And sometimes we think about January, and we can mourn what we've lost and talk about the things that, that are in the past and refer to it as the good old days and back in the day and the way things used to be that they're not today. We can spend a lot of energy just kind of wasting our time talking about what it used to be. And, and I love the fact that the Janus two-faced coin represents looking back and looking forward, but it's one action. It's one coin. It's one coin. Backward and forward. But the Apostle Paul made it one declaration. Not two separate things. One, forgetting the past and looking forward to the future. I press on. I press on. January, Janus, and Jesus. This brand new year, this brand new opportunity to start fresh. I encourage you, make a commitment. Make the commitment to be in church. Make the commitment to have, to read the Bible through. Make the commitment to lead your family in prayer. Make the commitment to win a soul. Make the commitment to get in better health. Make the commitment to have a better relationship in your marriage. Have a better, healthier, stronger marriage than ever before. I don't care if you've been married for five weeks or for 50 years. Make it the best that it's ever been. Make the commitment. It takes work. It takes effort. It's not just going to happen because you wish it would happen. It's going to happen because you are deliberate, you're intentional, you are pressing on. Okay? God wants to do some incredible things this year, but you've got to make the commitment. When it's raining and snowing, you commit to doing it. When it's sunny and there's other things to do, a lot of distractions, make the commitment. I love the, the fact that the Lord gives to us 24 hours in a day. People say, well, I, I don't know where the time went. Well, the time goes wherever we direct it to go. It's in our hands. It's up to us. It's what we make of it. So don't waste it. Don't waste January and wait until spring when things are better and decide then I'm going to do something. Today's the day that you do it. Today's that you begin the action. Today's when you take the steps. Today's when you get out that, that brochure and say, okay, I'm checking this off. I'm beginning today. I'm going to read my Bible through in 2023. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to invite you, if you want all, take just a few moments and join me here around the front of the church. And we want to pray, and then we're going to make a public declaration of our commitment together. But let's just come forward here right now and take a few moments and call on the name of the Lord. Let's talk to him together. What a privilege it is, God, just to be here today. What a privilege it is to be in your presence.